Assalamu alaikum dear students the poem that we are going to do today is 1914 by Philip Larkin this is one of Philip Larkin's best loved poems it was written on 17th may 1960 and it has been taken from the collection of his poems the witson weddings which was published in 1964 so this poem first time appeared in this collection When we look at the title of the poem it is quite conspicuous Philip Larkin has used the, the Roman numerals instead of Arabic numerals The title points to a very important historic event in the last century It tells us about the First World War which broke out on August 1914 Philip Larkin gives us the reason that why he has chosen this title He says in what it comes open I printed it that way because I wanted to remind the reader of the date on a monument and because I felt the emotional impact of 1914 in Arabic numerals was too great for anything I could possibly write myself in what it comes closed world war 1 which broke out on august 1914 was not a war between two countries it was a war between two camps on one side were such countries as britain france russia japan and uh, usa later on joined this camp On the other side were such countries as Turkey, Germany and Austria. Germany surrendered on 11th November 1918 after four long years of war. When this war ended, it gave a fatal blow to the economies of these countries. and according to an official report in the first world war the number of men who were killed was more than 8 million and more than 21 million men were wounded this war resulted in the disintegration of britain socially politically and economically Brother Anthony has given us a very detailed comment on the poem. In what it comes open, 1914 has often been read as a nostalgic poem, regretting a vanished English way of life. The Latin numerals of the title evoke war memorials. The detailed descriptions seem to suggest old photographs. but on closer examination they prove to be evocations of a kind of collective images of that period the children's names the pubs some of the details are so specific that footnotes will be needed outside of britain or even inside now the poem's rhetorical strategy disconcerts the whole poem is one sentence there is no main verb the multiple present participles participles serve to evoke a smooth onward flow of life in time while the poem's voice ironically hints at the sudden violent break that is about to occur quite unsuspected by the people out in the streets in 1914 Rather than being a hymn of sentimental nostalgia the poem is dark with the shadow of unexpected death in what it comes one wonders that philip larkin was not even born when this war took place so how come he knows uh, the effect of this war he was a witness to the second world war because he was a young man when the second world war broke out so uh, he could easily relate 
the effect of the second world war with the effects of the first world war and from an advantage of hindsight he could easily tell that what had gone wrong with the english society as a result of the first world war in this poem he laments over the loss of innocence and the loss of the british glory the great britain which was a very big power and its empire was so vast that it was believed that the sun never sets on england so in this poem we see philip larkin regretting over that loss of glory of the british empire let us now discuss the poem in detail those long uneven lines standing as patiently as if they were stretched outside the oval or villa park the crowns of hats the sun on mustached archaic faces grinning as if it were all an august bank holiday lark it is assumed that probably philip larkin had seen a photograph of young men uh, waiting in uneven lines to get themselves enrolled in army and to go to fight this uh, first world war and these men the way they were standing and the way they were in a uh, very happy mood it appeared as if they were going for some adventure for some amusement and uh, the reference here to oval and villa park is a reference to the famous cricket and uh, football grounds in england so as men they go to enjoy a cricket or a football match and they are stand outside the stadium to buy a ticket similarly the behavior of these men was also uh, like that they were probably standing there in the mood to look for an adventure or a thrill and they did not realize that what was the risk that they had put themselves into um, by getting themselves recruited for this war and um, philip larkin could also relate to it because in the second world war when he was a young man he also wanted to get recruited in the uh, army but due to his um, weak eyesight he was uh, not allowed to join the army and then these uh, men they had mustaches on their faces and the use of mustached archaic faces it also tells of the world which was quite old that means that the men still used to keep mustaches they were in fashion because later on like uh, by the mid of the 20th century when we look at the photographs and when we look at the movies of men of that age they had started shaving their faces but till this period men still love to keep mustaches and they uh, the photograph that philip larkin saw he saw the faces of men happy they were grinning because they had not realized the seriousness of the situation they thought that probably the war would just uh, uh, take place for a few days and they would come back quickly to their homes and they did not realize that it would take years to end this war and uh, they were in such a happy mood as if it was a august bank holiday because the war also Uh, started in august so that is why philip larkin he uses this word uh, this uh, reference of the august bank holiday as if they were in the mood of enjoying a holiday and the shut shops the bleached established names on the sun blinds the fathings and sovereigns and dark lord children at play called after kings and queens the tin advertisements for coco and twist and the pubs wide open all day 
Now, in this stanza, he presents us the picture of a city. And it's, it's a picture of a city uh, facing war. The shops are shut. The names of the shops are bleached and there are sun blinds on the shops. The farthings and the sovereigns are the, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, they are the coins that are used by the people. The dark cloth children at play because they, it's uh, the scenario of war going on. And uh, according to the code of conduct that is uh, practiced during the war, the people they are uh, not allowed to wear such clothes during daytime. So the dark clothed children at play and they are called after the names of kings and queens. So still it's the old world. The names of the kings and the queens are in fashion and the children who are born, they are named after the names of the kings and queens. Still no modern names are in fashion. And uh, this also tells us that still it's the old world. And the people living in this world in the previous stanza, the men had mustaches. In this stanza, the children are named after the names of the kings and queens. So it tells us that it's still the pre-war world. Though the war is going on, because the shops are shut, the, the, uh, the uh, names of the shops are bleached, probably due to the effect of the war. There are blinds on the windows of the shops and the children are wearing dark clothes. So it's the war that is going on. Then he goes on to say, the tin advertisements for cocoa and twist and the pubs wide open all day. Another sign of the war that the pubs, which are as a custom open during night, they are allowed to open during the day. So uh, in this stanza, Philip Larkin is presenting us a uh, scene of a city life that how is a city behaving during the war. 